Hello! Today I am showing my Scottish husband what meatloaf is. So Americans typically claim that meatloaf is all theirs, but we ate our fair share in Canada as well. Meatloaf is actually first recorded in the 5th century in Romania. However, it wasn't until the late 1800s when the Dutch settlers moved to Pennsylvania and it was first in writing. It was, let's get started. Here I have some ground beef, breadcrumbs, two eggs, some chopped fresh parsley, garlic, three cloves, and this is some black pepper and dried thyme. Now, the interesting trick to this recipe is that you don't actually dice the onions. You put them through a grater. This provides a lot more moisture. Well, this is your secret. So what you wanna do is take your breadcrumbs, put them in a bowl, then add your grated onion. Look at all those juices. Just on top like that. And I'll tell you, you might want to wear some glasses when you shred this because it is a, not a treat on the eyes. <laughs> okay, so now you want to get your hands in here and you want to get the breadcrumbs nice and wet with the onions. All right. So as you can see, that's a nice, moist, clumpy breadcrumb now. Excuse me, I'm going to go wash my hands. So I'm going to add the breadcrumb mixture to the beef. Now next, I'm going to add our spices, fresh parsley. I should have chopped the garlic in advance. But yeah, meatloaf became popular actually right after the meat grinder was invented, believe it or not, and that was in the late 1800s. Again, um, in America, where it became popular, um, kind of lost popularity for a while, but then after the World War II, uh, during the Great Depression, they had food rations, so they needed to make their meat stretch further, and so mixing it with breadcrumbs or oats enabled them to be able to have it to last longer. So that's why meatloaf became such a staple of the family dinners. So meatloaf is quite similar to haggis because haggis is meat and spices mixed with oats, other grains sometimes I'm sure, but this is like American haggis. <laughs> so now we're gonna add two eggs. This will bind everything together. I'm doing a crap job at that. Beautifully. <laughs> so you may have noticed that we've not added any salt to this dish. The reason for that is because of salt, just to add a little bit of oomph to the dish, we're gonna add beef bouillon cubes just crumbled up. The next step is to put the meat mixture into the loaf pan. I've lightly oiled the loaf pan. Now, some people make meatloaf without a loaf pan and swear by it. However, I'm still apprehensive about it because of the fact that it could dry out a lot quicker. I tend to enjoy the moisture that I get from the, the loaf pan more so. Okay, so we'll just roll it in. and then even it out. All right, so the next step before it goes in the oven is I've mixed up a sauce here. It's about half a cup of ketchup, two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, and about a tablespoon of brown sugar. And I'm just gonna put that all over the top here. So variations of this dish in Germany and Hungary actually have hard-boiled eggs or sausage in the center of this. Maybe I'll try that next time. And you're gonna wanna leave about half of this because we're gonna pull this out midway through cooking and then just top it up to keep it nice and moist. I have my oven preheated at 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit.
let that sit for 45 minutes and then we'll take it out and we'll put the remaining half of the sauce on top and then another 30 minutes to go. Thank you. All right, so it's been 45 minutes and now it's time to take it out of the oven. Oh. Now, as you can see, it is looking delicious. So I'm just gonna cover it with the rest of our sauce that we reserved before. All right. So I know it looks a little bit burnt, but trust me, that's just the sauce on the sides. The meatloaf is fine. All right, so this goes back in the oven for 30 minutes and then we're ready. So it's been 30 minutes and now it's time to finally take it out of the oven. I'm just gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes just to harden up so that I can get it out of the pan. I'm just releasing the sides right now. So I've given the meatloaf a few minutes to cool. Now I'm just gonna flip it out onto the board. Now, I'm gonna wait a few minutes before I start slicing, and I'm going to serve this with some mashed potatoes. And there you have it, moist, delicious meatloaf.